All rise. Voy a volver. The International Criminal Court is now in session. Rodeanse la Corte Penal International, eight to work. Please be seated. Voy a volver. Thank you very much. Court officer, please announce the case. Thank you, Mr. President. Situation in the Republic of Kenya. In the case of the prosecutor versus William Samoy Ruto and Joshua Arab Sang, ICC 01090111. We're in open session, Your Honours. Thank you. Appearances. Morning, Mr. President, Your Honours. For the prosecution, Anton Steinberg. With me, Alice Zago, uh, Lucio Garcia, Lorenzo Pugliati, and our, Grace man uh, our case manager, Ms. Grace Go, will be joining us shortly. Good morning, Mr. President, Your Honours. This morning, the victims participating in this case are represented by myself, Arsene Larenstic, and my colleague, James Maria. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honours. For Mr. Sang, who is present in court, is myself, Katwa Keegan, Caroline Busman, Logan Hambrick, Horna Lanham, and Rong Joy. Thank you, Your Honours. Uh, Mr. President, uh, Your Honours, uh, Mr. Ruto, who is present in court, uh, is represented by myself, Kareem Khan, Mr. Essa Fahl, Mr. David Hooper, QC, and Ms. Shamla Alagendra of Council, Ms. Lee Laurie, our legal uh, assistant, Ms. Grace Sullivan uh, at the back, um, trial support assistant, and uh, two interns, Ms. Farah Jamal and Ms. Diara uh, Maboye. I'm grateful. Thank you very much. Um, we are also linked with, uh, by video link to Nairobi. And we will take appearances from council who are on the other end of the video link. Um, please be careful to avoid mentioning the, uh, the name of the witness while introducing yourselves. Uh, there is no need to introduce a witness at this stage. Appearances from the remote location, please. Uh, Mr. President and uh, the Honorable Court, my name is Gregory Mutai, and I appear for the witness. Thank you. Mr. President, Your Honours, my name is Robert Abre. I'm here as duty counsel for the witness. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, we will go briefly into private session so we can discuss some, some matter for a proceeding at court of this private session. We're in open session, Your Honours. Thank you. Mr. Mutai, please proceed. Uh, Mr. President and the Honourable uh, Chamber. You, you remember, you, you, sorry to cut you in, um, before we proceed, uh, what I've just done is something uh, we should avoid doing, that is cut in, but I can cut in because I need to control the process. Uh, but it's important that uh, when other council are speaking um, to avoid cutting in. And also, it's important, Mr. Mutai, for you to speak not very fast because we want to ensure that the court reporters and the interpreters are able to capture um, what you are saying, your submissions. And again, remember not to mention the identifying, any identifying information in relation to the witness. Well guided, Mr. President. Mr. President, we request for the deferral of the testimony of this particular witness. We have 
some five reasons for doing so. Mr. President, the first reason uh, that necessitates this particular application is the health of the witness. Mr. President, we would like to bring to the attention of the court the document which has already been availed to the registry. That is to say, the medical report. In that medical report, the doctor has stated that the witness has some ailment. All right. Um, we, we have the medical report. I take it all counsel in the courtroom have it. Mr. Kigan Kappa nods and Mr. Ken nods as well. And victims counsel nod as well as the prosecution. Uh, we know what it says. Yes, the, the medical report uh, mentions the fact that the witness is not to go through uh, a stressful uh, situation. In our view, the trial of uh, this nature is very stressful, and it is our submission that, based on that doctor's finding, it may not be advisable for him to go through the rigors of trial at this point. Is he on trial? Uh, Mr. President, he's not on trial. He's, uh, he's a witness. Uh, my apologies for that. Uh, but the act, the very act of giving uh, a testimony and uh, being subjected to cross-examination can be very, uh, very uh, stressful. And our request, therefore, is that uh, a deferral be made on that ground. Mr. Okay. President. M Mr. Mutai, you heard us say that it is a primary responsibility of this chamber to ensure that witnesses who testify in this process are not subjected to induced stress. Is that not something I should have made a red flag concern you have? Yes, Mr. President. Uh, I remember that uh, the courts uh, warned, uh, or rather notified, the witness of uh, the assistance that the court was going to give him uh, during his testimony. But having considered uh, the advice of the court, the witness still feels that uh, the process is stressful and it will not be uh, in, in the interest of his health if he is made to testify at this point. Mr. Mutai, you, you've now presented health as the first reason for you seeking postponement. When was, yes, the first when was the first time you brought this reason to the attention of the chamber? We brought it in uh, the email uh, that we wrote to the courts on, 27th, on 28th of, uh, of August, after we received um, the doctor's report. Do you have that email of the 28th of August? What, what, can you get it and tell us why you say that? Uh, Mr. President, the particular uh, document is, uh, is to be availed to me, and uh, I therefore request for uh, one minute so that that can be done. You don't have your, a copy of your email? I, it's being brought uh, to me, uh, to the room where we, uh, 
currently uh, sitting. Your Honours, if I may be of assistance, I, I think I have the relevant email before me. Um, it appears that it was not on the 28th, but the 29th of August. The time of sending was 1426, sent from Mr. Greg Mutai to uh, Ms. Vera Wang of the registry. That may assist uh, my learned friend to find it. That's it. That is the correct position. That we send that email on uh, August 29th, on Friday, at 3.25 p.m. All right. Um, isn't it, is it not the case that you had written to the court on the 27th of August? Seeking postponement for 21 days. That is the case, Mr. President. And your, your reasons at the time was because you said you needed to get instructions from the witness. That was why you were asking for 21 days. Yes, that remains one of the reasons we're asking for deferral. Yes, but in your, yes. in your communication of the 27th, nothing at all was said about ill health. Wasn't that the case? That is the case, uh, Mr. President. And the chamber considered your request and said, no, you and the witness must still come to court on the 1st of September, that is today, and that you may make your submissions to the court as a preliminary matter. You got that response, did you not? That is so, Mr. President. And then you wrote again, reiterating your request for 21 days immediately upon receiving the chamber's position. And in your immediate response, you said nothing at all about ill health. Isn't that the case? That is the case, Mr. President. And it was only on the 29th, on Friday, that you submitted to the chamber the medical certificate. And now, from then on, the reason of ill health became the first reason. Isn't that the case? Uh, Mr. President, if uh, I could be allowed by the court to mention the chronology of events in, uh, in this particular uh, matter. Please proceed. Mr. President, we first wrote to the chamber, to the registry on 11th of August. Yes, on, on 11th of August. Did you say anything yes. about Ill, Ill health in your communication of 11th? We did not mention, uh, and for a very good reason, that we have had very limited uh, uh, communication with, uh, with the particular witness. And at that particular point, um, these issues were, were not particular, uh, particularly clear. And it's only when he was examined by the doctor and we got a medical report that we could notify the court of his particular situation. I, I as, a, as an advocate, could not have made a, a, a determination on, on his particular uh, health status. And, and it's only when I got the medical report that I was able to raise that particular issue uh, to the registry. All right. The medical report said that the doctor said that he had... The, the medical report is dated the 27th. 
this is the medical report that was communicated by you on the 29th of August. My Friday is dated the 27th of August. Did you see that? Yes, Mr. President. And in that medical report, the doctors say that the patient has been a patient of his for the past one month. That would take us back to around the 27th of July, at least, or thereabouts, isn't it? Yes, Mr. President. And you wrote to the court on the 11th of August. That is well after the 27th of July. And you said nothing about the witness's ill health. Uh, Mr. President, I communicated the information that was available to me at that particular time. All right. Uh, your communication to the court on the 27th, including the affidavit attached, clearly was following consultation with this witness because the witness did try an affidavit. That is so, uh, Mr. President. And the witness didn't tell you at that point that he had been unwell and had been seeing a doctor. He mentioned it in, uh, in passing, but did not give uh, details. And I didn't feel it was safe at that point uh, to, uh, to mention that in the email. And two further communications, Mr. Mutai, from you, and still no mention of the witness's ill health. That is so, Mr. President. All right. Uh, please proceed with your other reasons. Uh, Mr. President, may I request uh, the indulgence of the court to mention that uh, Article 68 of the Rome Statutes uh, has a very strong um, text issues of uh, health of a witness as something of uh, very paramount uh, importance. What does it say, Article 68? It says the court shall take appropriate measures to protect the safety, physical, and psychological well-being, dignity, and privacy of victims and witnesses. In so doing, the court shall have regard to all relevant factors, including age, gender, as defined in Article 7, Paragraph 3, and health. Keep going, please. Yes. And, nature, and the nature of the crime in particular, but not limited to where the crime involves sexual or gender violence or violence against children. The prosecutor shall take such measures, particularly during investigation and prosecution of such crimes. These measures shall not be prejudicial to or inconsistent with the right of the accused and a fair and impartial trial. Thank you. Yes. Proceed. Now, the, the other reason why um, we're not ready to proceed at this particular moment, uh, Mr. President and the Honorable Court, is that we've not been provided with a statement that the witness is said to have given to the prosecution. That is despite the fact that in their first communication to us, the OTP did promise to avail all such necessary documents. Without such, without a statement, the advocates, the, the lawyers for the, for the witness are not able at this particular point to give him advice and uh, to guide him during his testimony. And so uh, that is the second reason why we are requesting that uh, this matter be deferred so that that statement is provided to the advocates for the witness. This issue is very fundamental. Uh, 
uh, because it goes into the issue of, uh, of fairness to the witness, especially a witness such as this one who has recanted his uh, testimony. Um, the, did the registrar or the registry invite you to apply to put um, did the registrar or the registry as the case may be invite you to apply to be put in the list of counsel who may make representations in court for the ICC? That is the case, Mr. President. Uh, did you apply? I applied, Mr. President. You have applied? Yes, Mr. President. When did you apply? Um, based on my recollection, I applied on uh, Wednesday last week. All right. But that information is subject to confirmation. But that is about the, the time when I made that application. Did you send it by fax or by email? Do you have record of your application? I made that application by email, and I attached all the necessary documents. All right. Now... Yes. Uh, would you then need 21 days to um, for purposes of the adjournment if the trouble is that you do not have the witnesses statements pardon me mr president the question is if that is a problem Problem being that you do not, you've not been provided with the uh, witnesses' statements. If that is the issue, does that issue require a postponement of the testimony for 21 days? Um, according to the information available to me, it takes usually a period of about a month for an application to be enrolled in the list of counsel to be processed and a determination to be made. Oh, sorry, I, I must have uh, misled you. I had moved on to something else. But my question is this. You said your second ground for the request for postponement, your second ground for that request is that you have not provided with the witnesses um, statement. Yes. Question is, assuming that you're able to be put on the list of counsel immediately, would you need 21 days then? Because you haven't been given to, uh, the witness's statement. Would you need 21-day uh, postponement of the testimony? Uh, Mr. President, I would still, uh, subject to the direction of the court, request for 21 days for the two reasons which I've already given. One, on the health ground, and secondly, because I need to look at that statement and I also need to look for and supply uh, the documents that would be enable the court to uh, consider the issues in this uh, particular uh, witness's testimony. All right. You said you had five reasons where we've now addressed two. Do you have any more to say on the non-provisional statements? Or are you prepared now to move on to your other three reasons? Um, yes. Um, in uh, a further elaboration of uh, the second um, ground, um, it is our view, um, Mr. President, that uh, that particular statement ought to have been provided uh, to the witness, uh, but unfortunately, he wasn't uh, left with a copy. So we've not been able to, to look at it and uh, 
advise him accordingly. Uh, the third reason, Mr. President, is that the witness has expressed an intention to me to... Wait, wait. Stop. Uh, all right, proceed. I think I know where you're going. Proceed. I wanted yes. to make sure that you were not going to reveal the identity of the witness. And I also want to remind you of that periodically as you submit. I'm because well we, are, we are in open session. I'm well guided, Mr. President. Mr. President, the third reason is that the witness has informed me that he wishes to appoint a senior member of the Kenyan Bar to act as a lead counsel in this uh, particular matter. And we have already notified or brought to the attention of the registry the identity of uh, the particular uh, lead counsel that we want to bring on board. Just like me, the said lead counsel would require to be provided with a statement so that he can have a look at it and be able to advise the witness with me on the way forward in this matter. And our view is that uh, that would require a deferral of the testimony so that instructions can be uh, given and uh, necessary preparation made so that when the, the witness comes to testify, he is ready uh, to do so and He's been, uh, and, and the witness would have been uh, advised of uh, uh, well advised and well prepared to testify. Proceed. So uh, on that third ground, we request for a deferral so that uh, all these things uh, that we've mentioned uh, can be done. The fourth uh, reason, uh, Mr. President, is one to do with, uh, and I just mentioned uh, a few moments ago, is one to do with uh, certain documents that uh, the witness would like to avail uh, to the registry and therefore to the uh, trial chamber. That is in regard to the records of his... Uh, uh, telephone, uh, telephone records, and records of M-Pesa, that is a, a mobile money uh, transaction history, so that he can explain uh, certain things in regard to his uh, testimony. Now, Mr. President, he will require to make an application to the particular service provider and uh, time would be required for him to be able to get those records. And we believe that uh, if given 21 days, he will be able to get those records and therefore be able to adduce evidence that would enable the, the trial chamber come to the right decision in the matter. Proceed, please. <clears throat> Proceed, please. Uh, the fifth reason, uh, Mr. President, is that uh, there has been issues that uh, in regard to uh, what we could call background issues, uh, such as the fact that uh, until uh, today is... Uh, careful, 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 careful. Think about what you're going to say. We, if it isn't going to um, reveal the identity of the witness, you may proceed. But if it I'm will, well Mr. President. if it will tell us, so we will go into private session for that. 
Um, I verily believe that uh, that information is of a general nature and uh, might not reveal his, uh, his identity. Please proceed. That fifth reason is that uh, up to today, and uh, it's only today that uh, certain uh, documents uh, belonging to him were released uh, to him and that there has been uh, concerted efforts to um, sort of uh, put him in a, a stressful uh, situation. And uh, we believe that is one of the reasons why he is not in a, in a good state to testify today. So he's... Uh, his travel, his, uh, travel documents were taken away from him and were only returned this morning just before his uh, session began. And um, the officers of uh, the OTP had uh, put him in a very difficult uh, situation in regard to making uh, too many calls to him. So all these... Uh, well, well, let's go into private session for a brief, a brief minute on the last point. I also note that up until the 10th of... August, the prosecution was in contact with the witness um, on a regular basis for the purposes of arranging the witnesses hand over to the Victims and Witnesses Unit for transportation to testify in The Hague. Up until that time, the witness had indicated to the prosecution that he was willing and ready to travel to The Hague to testify, and it's, it is for that reason that the necessary visas were applied for through the Victims and Witnesses Unit, and I'll return to the issue of the passports in due course. Uh, at no stage did the witness inform members of the prosecution that he was undergoing any treatment or that he was feeling unwell. In the course of his assessment by the Victims and Witnesses Unit, on the 4th of August, the witness met with members of the unit for the purposes of a pre-travel assessment and security assessment. I'm informed by members of the VW that it is standard as part of such an assessment to put questions to the witness as to any treatment he might be receiving because members of the VW would have to ensure that uh, treatment and medication is provided during the course of travel to The Hague as well as any medical complaints that the witness might have. I'm informed that the witness did not mention any medical complaints or any medical treatment. Up until what time, sorry? That was at the time of assessment on the 4th of August, which would have been uh, approximately a week uh, after, according to this medical note, his treatment by, um, uh, by the relevant doctor commenced. Now, uh, they were also in contact with him up until the 10th of August, and up until that stage, at least, no mention was made. So it would appear, Your Honours, that this is a, uh, the first time that any indications of health have been raised, or certainly have been noted, and the prosecution's submission is that the certificate should be seen in this light. Now, if one turns to the contents of the certificate, the diagnosis is one of acute depression. Um, it appears that the doctor concerned is a, a GP. One doesn't know whether he has any specific training in uh, psychology or psychiatric matters. But looking at the, di looking at the um, conditions that he lists in the certificate, it is apparent that these are all subjective symptoms. In other words, one can't see a headache. The witness tells you my head hurts, and you write that down. Uh, 
accompanied by palpitations, general body fatigue, abdominal pains, difficulty concentrating, and generalized anxiety. All I would submit subjective symptoms. What we do know objectively is that he was subject to a battery of tests which were all normal. The resultant diagnosis appears to have been one of a process of elimination, as it were, uh, and that is one of depression, for which he has been prescribed medication. Now, my learned friend has pointed out correctly that the court and the prosecution all have a duty towards witnesses to ensure their physical and psychological health and well-being, obviously to be balanced against the fair trial rights of the accused. The organ that is primarily responsible for ensuring the health and psychological well-being of witnesses, certainly up until the time they appear before Your Honours, is the Victims and Witnesses Unit. I am aware, Your Honours, that members of the Victims and Witnesses Unit are in Nairobi as we speak, including one of their psychologists who's standing by. And in fact, the plan had been to start the assessment of this witness on Thursday last week, for which he was contacted and arrangements were made to fly him to Nairobi to meet with members of the Victims and Witnesses Unit in order to conduct the necessary medical and psychological assessments, as well as to prepare this witness for testifying. Uh, that would include not only the normal courtroom familiarization, but also uh, familiarizing the witness with his prior statements. Unfortunately, the witness did not travel as had been arranged. Mr. Steinberg, it is now 11 o'clock. Do you have a lot more to say? Uh, which is we can, you can wrap it up in, say, five minutes. But if you have more than five minutes, you might as well take a morning break now. I'm afraid it will be more than five minutes, Your Honours. All right. We will take our morning break now and come back at 11.30. All right. <laughs>